1963, a school student freezing ice cream was surprised that when the liquid mixture started out hotter, it seemed to freeze faster, contradicting the well-established Newton's law of cooling. His teachers could not explain this unexpected behaviour, which was not then well known to scientists. It has been reproduced repeatedly, so it is now recognised that in many, but not all, circumstances, hot water will freeze faster than cold water. This happens consistently enough for modern scientists to call this the Mpemba effect, after that student who noticed and asked why. This strange behaviour has already been observed and reported earlier in history by thinkers such as Aristotle and Francis Bacon. Modern scientists have tested various causal mechanisms for the Mpemba effect, but no one seems yet to have produced a completely satisfactory explanation. One theory is that hotter water evaporates more, leaving less behind to freeze. However, there is not always enough evaporation to explain the observations. Another theory suggests that different circulation patterns might lead to a hotter top surface leading heat more quickly. However, the Mpemba effect has also been observed in closed containers. Another possibility is that cold water can have more dissolved impurities such as gases or salts, which might discourage ice crystals from forming. However, the temperature of initially hotter water has been observed to fall faster than, and eventually fall below, the temperature of initially colder water. So the explanation must involve more than the ease of ice crystal formation. Finally, initially hotter water might somehow affect the speed of conduction through the container by interaction with the environment. Some scientists suggest that several mechanisms, each operating in different cases, might be needed for a proper explanation. The following proposed explanation of the Mpemba effect relies solely on the physical properties of pure water. It does not appeal to highly restrictive properties of the container, dissolved impurities, mass loss through evaporation, or supercooling, where temperatures fall below freezing without ice formation. Since the explanation relies on circulation patterns, it is closest to, but not exactly, the hot top surface theory. However, it does not rule out that these other mechanisms may also sometimes operate. We should remember that heat energy is a total quantity, but temperature describes how concentrated the heat is within matter. Bodies with identical quantities of heat can have different distributions. Heat could be highly concentrated in some places, giving a high temperature there, and less concentrated elsewhere, giving a low temperature. Or it could be more uniformly concentrated everywhere, giving an even temperature. Consider two cups of water, one very hot and the other much cooler. If the water is mixed together and returned to the cups, the resulting warm mixture will have the same amount of heat as originally in the cups. The mixture will cool towards room temperature. Now compare the amount of cooling if the cups are kept separate. The hot cup falls in temperature more quickly and will lose more heat than the same quantity of warm mixture. The cool cup will lose less heat than the warm mixture. However, the additional amount of heat lost by the hot water compared to the warm mixture is greater than the reduced amount of heat lost by the cool cup. If the water in the cups is kept separate, letting them cool first before then mixing will give a faster cooling than mixing first and then cooling the warm mixture. Newton's law of cooling is reasonable when the cooling object is at an even temperature. But if colder and hotter parts of a liquid are kept separate, heat loss can be even faster overall. We show that this is how hot water can cool down and freeze faster than cold water. The initially hotter liquid can maintain separate hot and cold parts in the container, exposing the hotter parts more effectively to the cooling environment. The initially colder liquid will have a more uniform temperature and will subsequently cool less quickly. Note that still water is a poor conductor of heat. Even after half a minute, outside temperature might penetrate a body of still water by only 3 millimetres. However, even small temperature differences will change water's density enough to drive circulation currents that move heat by convection at much greater speeds than conduction. Cooling water by only a few degrees is enough to induce convection in depth greater than a few millimetres. Convection is therefore a dominant heat transfer mechanism within water containers of typical household size. When hot water is placed in a colder environment, thermal conduction will first cool the edges producing a thin film of colder water at the outside edge of the total volume. Unless the container is a very poor thermal conductor, the thin cold film forms not only at the top surface, which may be open or closed, but also at the sides and base. Colder water is denser and thus begins to sink. At the top, the colder, denser, sinking water loses contact with the colder outside environment and stops cooling. It mixes with the hot, lighter, rising water from underneath cooling it down. 
Mixing limits the speed of both the sinking cold and rising hot water. On the sides, however, the colder, denser sinking water maintains contact with the cold sides, continuing cooling and becoming denser before accumulating at the bottom. Viscous friction resistance limits the sinking speed. Once the cold water reaches the bottom, its greater density no longer drives convection. Only conduction then allows temperatures to even out between the top and bottom, and this is quite slow. This maintains a separation between the hot water accumulating at the base from the side edges and the hot reservoir above, away from the sides, that is cooling slowly through the top surface. Although the water sinking along the side experiences a large fall in temperature, this does not significantly reduce the temperature of the hot reservoir. So what difference does starting temperature make? Hot water will lose heat quantity more quickly, but not necessarily so quickly so as to reach a lower temperature, concentration, earlier than cold. This is Newton's law of cooling. One reason for the quicker heat loss is convective heat transfer in the air near the container. But more importantly, the large, warm, less dense reservoir of water in the middle is even lower density for the initially hotter water than for the initially colder. The large density difference between the reservoir and the cold water at the sides produces a large buoyancy force, which strongly pushes the downward side flow. Also, because the water in most of the container is hot, it is not very thick and sticky and provides little viscous resistance. So the downward side flow of cold water is quite speedy. In contrast, when the water is initially cooler, the density difference between the warm reservoir and the cold sides is less, so the buoyancy force driving convection is weaker. And because the reservoir is not so hot, it is thicker and stickier, providing more viscous resistance, so the downward side's flow is much less speedy. A further detail is that as temperature falls, viscous resistance rises fairly steadily. However, the change in density is much larger for hotter water than for colder water. For example, compared to water at 4 degrees, 80 degree water is close to 30 parts per thousand less dense, but 25 degree water is only 3 parts per thousand less dense, a tenth as much, and 10 degree water is about 0.3 parts per thousand less dense, only a tenth as much again. So the buoyancy forces pushing water down the sides to cool are much, much stronger for a hot reservoir than one that is only warm. With a hotter reservoir, because the water along the container side sinks more speedily, it has less time to cool so that the penetration width of the cold layer is narrower. However, the overall rate that volumes of water are cooled along the sides is faster. This is because the greater flow speed of the cold layer more than compensates for the narrower width. For example, water at 80 degrees could drive a convection flow that sinks 10 centimetres in about one second, during which time conduction cooling could penetrate the container to form a cold layer about half a millimetre wide. However, the convection flow driven by the buoyancy force from 25 degrees water may be four times slower, so about four seconds is needed to sink 10 centimetres, forming a cold layer about twice as wide, one millimetre. Overall though, the volume of water that cools on the container sides might be double for water cooling from 80 degrees to near zero compared to from 25 degrees. So for the initially hotter case, heat loss by convective cooling along the sides is faster, and larger volumes of cold water accumulate at the base without strongly reducing the hotter temperatures of the warm reservoir driving that convection. The secret is limited mixing, maintaining the separation between the bottom cold water accumulation and the hotter reservoir that doesn't cool much, that drives the speedy, cooling side flows. And when water from the hotter reservoir is eventually pushed down the sides to cool, it cools quickly from a high temperature. The system is a heat engine driving a convective flow that quickly cools small quantities of water at a time without significantly reducing the high temperatures driving the heat engine. A higher temperature drives a faster convective flow and greater loss of heat. This can more than compensate for the greater initial quantities of heat that must be ejected from the container to allow freezing. This then is one plausible explanation for the Mpemba effect. But more detail can be added to the explanation. While cold water is sinking along the container sides, there is also convective cooling at the top surface. However, Surface cooling doesn't keep the cooled water separate from the hot reservoir. As soon as colder water starts to sink, it loses contact with the top cooling environment. Sinking, it mixes with warmer water rising from the hot reservoir, creating regions of intermediate temperature. Convective cooling through the top surface and mixing should induce more uniform temperatures throughout the container. And may oppose the tendency for initially hotter water to cool and freeze faster than cold. Surface cooling reduces the reservoir temperature and the density differences that drive fast convective flows along the sides, but still leaves enough heat to require a long time to cool. 
The story is further complicated because water less than 4 degrees becomes less dense as it cools instead of more dense. This will tend to reverse the convective flows described above. Also, if the edges become cold enough to freeze, the ice could severely hamper further convective flow. Even though ice conducts heat slightly better than still water, conductive heat lost through the ice will tend to be much slower than from warm water that is continually being replenished by convective flow. Nevertheless, these details do not change the main storyline. Because water density is greatest at 4 degrees, the cold accumulation at the container base should be well mixed by circulating convection currents, maintaining even temperatures near 4 degrees, until most of the warm reservoir above cools to that temperature. Only afterwards would the cold accumulation at the bottom cool much further. Any solid ice on the top surface would significantly slow surface cooling and should begin forming at the latest by the time all the water cools to 8 degrees. Below this temperature, ice is less dense than water, so that thereafter any ice should float on the top surface and be maintained by the cold environment. So then, we recap the main storyline. Initially, hotter temperature water drives faster cooling convection flows down the container sides. Provided the container conducts heat reasonably well, greater volumes of cold, dense water accumulate at the bottom depths more quickly without significantly reducing the temperature of the reservoir of hotter water above. This reservoir cools slowly, mostly via convective cooling through the top surface. A greater temperature difference is maintained, continuing to drive side edge convection cooling until the volume of warm reservoir has been mostly depleted. Because the reservoir depletion rates are faster for greater reservoir temperatures, initially hotter water could continue to lose heat more rapidly than initially colder water. For many boundary conditions, that is initial water temperatures, outside environment temperatures, container conductivities and container shapes, initially hotter water may eventually contain less heat than initially colder water and will thus freeze more quickly. Further investigations, including experimentation, are required to challenge or verify the qualitative description above. Numerical simulation studies of thermal and fluid dynamics should also provide a more quantitative understanding. Of interest is a comparison of convective cooling on the top surface versus the side edges, and an understanding of the role of container depth and surface area, and also of container conductivity and shape. Behaviour between 8 and 0 degrees may also be of interest. A more detailed and accurate picture will enable a much better understanding of why and when hot water cools and freezes faster than cold water, hopefully enabling this long-running mystery to finally be solved.